Yo, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to Goal Line Hockey. It's your boy Kevin Forte and we are taking a look today at the Montreal Canadiens. And I'm going to try this again. I know my Habs fans out there want me to try it again. Les Canadiens de Montreal. So you guys are saying if I'm going to talk about the Habs, I have to work on my French a little bit. So that is something that we are going to work on. So with that out of the way, it's officially over for the Montreal Canadiens as they are the first team in the 2022 Stanley Cup playoffs to officially be eliminated. Uh, it's been a rough season in Montreal. After going to the Stanley Cup Finals up against the Tampa Bay Lightning in 2021, going on a really Cinderella run, like nobody was expecting the Canadiens to get out of the first round. They were down 3-1 to the Leafs in that series, came all the way back, won it in seven, swept the Oilers, beat the Jets. They did some really impressive stuff, and then next thing you know, this is where we are a year later. Now, a lot of people would have predicted this based off of, well, really the controversy of the offseason moves. So we knew at the end of last season that there was going to be some issues with this team, especially injury-wise. We knew that this team was going to have issues with Shea Weber and Carey Price. And that's been a huge part of the problem this year in Montreal. Is those are two guys that they heavily relied on in that cup run last year. That, you know, Shea Weber, we have not seen him this season. And as far as Carey Price, kind of a similar boat. So that's been a big problem for them. Not to mention the fact that they've also lost some key players, especially down the middle. Yes, they brought in Christian Dvorak to come in as a replacement, but they lost Philip Deneau, who went in free agency to the Los Angeles Kings, and they didn't match the offer sheet from Carolina for their third overall pick, Jesperi Kakinyemi, who is now a member of the Hurricanes. So you're talking about a situation where a lot of things did not favor the Habs this year. And, um, I mean, you're looking at, you know, in terms of their leading goal scorer, Nick Suzuki has 14 goals, which is great. He leads the team in goals. Except you look at pretty much every other franchise in the NHL, their leading goal scorer has at least 25 to 35 goals. Nick Suzuki leads the Habs with 14. That just shows you the disparity. They're lacking that goal scoring. And that's really nothing between Carey Price or Shea Weber that could have been fixed, or even Dino or Kakanyemi, but it's the combination of everything kind of coming together as had the Habs where they are this year. You look at the Canadians, the amount of money they have spent, it's pretty terrifying right now. If you're Molson, you're probably you know, if you're Jeff Molson, the owner of this team, they are they're the first team to get eliminated from the playoffs, and they have spent the most money in the NHL. That's right, they've spent more money than Vegas, Tampa, and Colorado, who are all in the Stanley Cup winning window. And you're looking at the Habs, who are practically the worst team in the league, they've also spent the most on this roster and uh like i said it's been a rough year for the habs now some other little interesting tidbits here uh the habs have struggled in terms of making the playoffs they've made the playoffs only three of the last nine seasons it's been a rough go of things in montreal not to mention the fact they have lost over 300 man games lost this season due to the injuries again shea weber and carrie price being the majority of that and they actually lead the nhl in man games lost this season uh again coming down to those two guys but they've been without jeff petrie at points they've been without their top players at points and it's really gotten to the point where the habits just really couldn't stand a chance they, they couldn't catch a break this year and that's why they are where they are. Now, the good news is uh, there is some promise. The Montreal Canadiens host the NHL draft here in 2022 up at the Bell Center, which is very exciting. Not to mention they have a new head coach, Dominic Ducharme. Things weren't going well there. There was some, you know, specifically Jeff Petrie requested a trade out of Montreal because of that whole situation. He wasn't a fan of Ducharme. So Marty St. Louis comes in. He's, you know, another francophone coming in. He's been a great role model for this team. He's really been setting the tone. He's been a good leader for these guys. They've had a couple big games here recently. They beat the Maple Leafs at home a couple weeks ago. Like, they have those kind of games that show the Habs fans there is promise here. And this is before things get better. Like, things are bad right now. 
and they're going to get better. And like I said, they have the draft. They're probably going to have a top five draft pick. Who knows? They could be in the running for a guy like Logan Cooley, Shane Wright. That would be a really great addition to this roster, as well as the development of some of the young guys like Nick Suzuki and Cole Caulfield and Alexander Romanov on the back end. There is promise there. Justin Baran, who's probably going to come in. He came a part of the Lekkonen trade. So there is good things coming in Montreal. It's just hard to see that when this season right now is happening. Um, but man, I mean, you look at, I mean, the Habs are not the only team that struggled. You look at last year's, you know, the final four teams in the Stanley Cup playoffs, right? It was the New York Islanders and the Tampa Bay Lightning, the Vegas Golden Knights, and the Montreal Canadiens. Three of those four teams will miss the playoffs here in 2022. Those being the Islanders, the Golden Knights, and, and here, the Montreal Canadiens. The Tampa Bay Lightning are the only team out of those four to be going back to the playoffs. Again, at this point, the Islanders could... Mm, that's really, that's a glimmer of hope. Vegas is, as the days go on with their injury issues, you know, kind of similar to Montreal in that regard. But um, that's kind of what we're looking at here. So Montreal Canadiens are not the only team that saw the success last year. And then going into this year, things completely changed. And they knew that. They knew the window was closing. That's why Bergevin made that trade three or four years ago for Shea Weber. He knew he wasn't going to have Weber for 10 years. He knew he was going to have him for that window where they had an opportunity to compete. And you know what? Give Bergman credit because they were just a, they were three wins from winning a Stanley Cup. They were that close, yet it seems so far at this point. Guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you again next time.